I'm Sally Webb, a Current Affairs producer-director. It's here in the edit suite that you bring all the material you've shot and try and put it together in a way that makes sense for the viewer. In the next series of films, I'm going to be showing you the conventions of directing, that is, the way you should be filming, the shots that you should be getting, to make life here a little bit easier. Shot sizes, to talk to the crew. You need to learn the names of all the shot sizes so that you can tell your cameraman what framing you want and how big you want your subject to be in the frame. To edit sequences, you need lots of different shot sizes to be able to edit a sequence. To provide new information, each shot size gives different information, be it where someone is, what they're doing, who they are, what they're thinking. For scripting, if you're talking about someone, you want to see them. Learn the short form for logging. Learn the abbreviation for each shot size so that you can log your rushes quickly and effectively. In the extreme long shot, the subject should be less than one sixth of the height of the frame. This shot is frequently known as a geography shot because the subject is unidentifiable and the environment of the subject is the important information that this shot is showing. For the very long shot, the subject is about one third of the height of the frame and again the environment is still an important element here. However, you can discern the gender of the subject, although any activity can't really be recognised. For the long shot, the subject covers the entire frame, but there should be good headroom and footroom. The clothing is now recognisable, action can be seen, the subject is now identifiable, but again the emphasis is still on the background, the context of the subject. For the medium long shot, this example cuts below the knee and this is the appropriate yeah, framing if the subject yeah, is going good. to be moving. It's no, a good no, shot size for filming activity, yeah, but you can't road. really yeah, see the eyes at this stage. Okay. Make sure yeah, you yeah. leave walking space if yeah, they're going to move. Okay. This medium long shot shows a cut above the knee, which is a better framing if the subject is stationary. But as yeah, you see, hi, when the subject going? moves, yeah. it doesn't look as natural as cutting below yeah. the knee, as you need to see no, a joint for there. movement. There's a danger it'll look like a floating torso okay. if you can't see okay. the joint. Yeah, yeah. The mid shot cuts below the waist and is an excellent framing for activity, as the hands can be seen and so can the eyes, which starts to give you more of an insight yeah, into hi, your subject. Going? Make sure there's good headroom and looking room. The focus is very much now on this person and what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The medium close-up cuts below the shoulder joint and is the perfect size for interviews. The eyes are really visible. There's space for a name super or Aston without appearing to gag the interviewee, as frequently happens with tighter framings. The eyes should lie on the upper two-thirds line of the screen. As you can see, any activity with the hands is completely unseen. The close-up cuts under the chin. The focus is very much on the eyes and mouth. This is a good shot size for really showing who someone is and what they might be thinking. But be careful if you use it for interviews that require a name super or Aston, as the interviewee will appear gagged. They may also go in and out of shot as the framing's quite tight. The big close-up cuts the brow and chin. The eyebrows are now very prominent and any movement of the eyes is really exaggerated. It's quite an unnatural framing from the sense that to see someone this way in real life, you'd have to be extraordinarily close to them. But it can be very dramatic if that's the purpose. The same problems of gagging and moving in and out of frame apply if you use it for an interview. The extreme close-up is essentially just the eyes and sometimes the nose. The simplest movement is hugely dramatic and exaggerated. The subject can either look very sinister or quite comical. It's the type of framing used in spaghetti westerns or comedies, but it can be quite distracting if used in an interview. Framing and composition. We have two eyes and see things three-dimensionally but the camera sees everything two-dimensionally. 
which means pictures frequently lack depth. If you shoot things straight on, the picture can look flat. But if you shoot at a diagonal, you can play with perspective and create angles, which creates a sense of depth. So this is how not to shoot. The camera is straight in front of the subject, who's sitting on a sofa, which is right in front of a wall. When you look at this, the image is quite obviously lacking in depth. It's flat. There are lines coming out of the head. The statue looks like a growth on his head. He's centrally framed. It really is quite awful. Now, if the camera moves to the diagonal, and it's not that far away from where he was, but you'll see the difference in the image is huge. Suddenly there's depth, there are no awful lines or growths, he has space behind him, he's much better framed, and it's much more pleasant on the eye. How you frame a subject should not only create an expectation of what's going to happen or be seen next, it's crucial in storytelling. The subject here is pretty centrally framed. There's nothing technically wrong with it, but it doesn't really create any expectation. We can't imagine what may be going to happen. But if you simply pan to the right and change your framing, look what happens. Immediately this suggests that someone is going to come up behind the guy, the audience is drawn into the story, and now has an expectation of what is going to happen next. This is storytelling by creative framing. Again, if it pans back to the left, the expectation is that either someone is going to come and sit next to him, he's going to leave, or that you're going to be showing what it is that he's looking at. The rule of thirds. This is a convention that also applies to photography and painting, which says that it's most pleasing on the eye if you place your main subjects at the intersections of lines dividing the screen vertically and horizontally into three equal parts. It means that things don't get bunched all together in the middle with nothing at either sides, or having things on the extreme edges with nothing in the middle. Camera setup. You should be thinking about height, the position, and the angle of the camera for each of your different shots. Very so here you see the camera is below the eye line. It's known as a low angle. When you film a low angle like this, the subject looks much bigger in frame. Any hand action looks very big and exaggerated. By doing it this way, you can make your subject look domineering and intimidating. So here you can see the camera is now above the eye line. It's known as a high angle shot. The subject looks smaller, intimidated, alone. It's good if you want a high geography shot. You get the feeling of looking in on the room. If you don't change the angle of each shot, then you're in danger of getting a jump cut. So every time you change shot size, change the angle. Here you can see the camera taking a wide shot and then without changing angle, he shoots a close-up. Watch how the picture jumps when they're cut together. What you should do is move to a different angle for the close-up. This leads to a much smoother edit.